you everyone for um, attending my lecture again. Um, so I guess for my last lecture, uh, let me start by just give you a, a quick summaries of um, what I've been uh, looking at and hopefully uh, it will give you a better picture of uh, what I've been talking about. So, um, so the main focus uh, of, uh, of my talk was on two problems. One is the interpolation problems. And as I um, uh, uh, mentioned in my first lectures, if one is interested in uh, when a set of point or a set of fed points uh, with uh, the same multiplicity um, has maximal uh, Hilbert functions, then that uh, is uh, a very difficult problem. Uh, even in a case where the multiplicity are all two, uh, that's a major theorem of Alexander and, and Herschelvik. Uh, and, and the Alexander and Herschelvik and all the study of the uh, of the situations is very much related to uh, the study of secant varieties uh, and secant variety of very nasty variety, uh, particularly, and also the worryings problems, which I didn't have a chance to talk about. Uh, on the other hand, if one is more interested in the initial degree uh, of the ideals of uh, a collection of fed points, uh, meaning instead of looking at when the Hilbert function is maximal, we want to look at when is the first place that the Hilbert function is not the same uh, as the Hilbert function of the ring, which is the obvious one. Uh, uh, then in this case, we are interested in the initial degree of the M symbolic power, uh, sorry, this should be uh, X, and the M symbolic power of uh, I X, which is the same as I of Y. Uh, and in this uh, directions, there are a number of, uh, uh, important conjectures. Uh, Nagata's conjecture, of course, is the most famous one. And then there's Chudnovsky and Imai's conjecture, which is a generalization of Chudnovsky's conjecture. Uh, in the past, before uh, we get into uh, this uh, conjecture or these problems, uh, there are a lot of different results, uh, particularly uh, the most recent result about uh, 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 Fowley, Montero, and C in 2018, they started to use the technique of specialization uh, to prove that uh, Junovsky and the Mary's conjecture uh, are true for very general set of point. And um, our goal is to get rid of this uh, very uh, condition. So just look at the general set of point. Um, and in order to do that, what we uh, were looking at is to instead of considering another problem, which is also very, very well uh, studied in uh, algebra, at least in the community of algebra uh, community, and that's the containment uh, of powers of ideals, particularly the containments between symbolic and ordinary powers of, of ideals. Um, for this uh, conjecture, specifically, one is uh, one does not need the full statement of the containments. Uh, we really need this containment for uh, uh, for power r big enough, or for infinitely many uh, values of the power r. So we are interested in the stable containments. Now, as before, if we try to apply specialization, because we are proving a statement that involves infinitely many values of the powers. So if we uh, apply specialization. That would means we have to apply specialization once for every power. And every time we apply specializations, whatever statements we have from the generic set of points go down to the specialized set of points. It is only uh, uh, it only holds in a uh, an open subset of the of the parameter space. And so that means for infinitely many powers, you would have to take the intersections of infinitely many open subset. And that's why uh, you run into the situation where you have to consider very general set of points. So um, to uh, overcome that uh, obstacle so that we can prove the conjecture for just general set of points, meaning finding just one open subset, uh, as I said last time, there are two different possibilities. One is uh, we try to prove that there's one open subset that works for all powers, or which seem to be a very difficult thing to do, or we can just apply specialization once for just one power and somehow try to get what we want. And this is what we, uh, what, uh, this is what, what we did. So what we did was we um, look at the generic set of points and then we establish one containment. So 
inequalities, if we're interested in inequalities, for this generic set of points. And then we apply one specialization, just one power. Uh, and then we get one containment for the specialized set of point on one open subset. And then we prove a theorem uh, that is called uh, one containment implies stable containment. Meaning in order to get these stable containments, all you need is just one containment. Right? So uh, this is the, con the, the content of my uh, lecture today. I'm going to talk about how uh, one look at one containment for generic set of points and how uh, we get one containment implies uh, stable containment. Okay. Um, so this is the, my um, uh, fourth lecture. We're talking about containment and inequality for general set of point. And um, so the first section is uh, one containment imply uh, stable containment. That's actually the uh, most important contribution that we have toward these problems. Uh, the rest are somewhat known or have been applied before by other author. So uh, what, we do, uh, what we did was to prove the following theorem is 4.1. So this is a theorem by Bissou, Griffo, myself, and Nguyen uh, in 2021. Uh, we prove uh, that if, so again, uh, uh, just let I be a radical ideal of big height H in the polynomial ring R. And let me just once again saying that this polynomial ring corresponds to the uh, uh, to the n-dimensional projective space. Uh, if there exists a constant C, just one value, such that we have the containment that I of HC minus H imply and uh, contain in M to the power R times H minus one and I uh, sorry, uh, C. So R is, is now replaced by C. So I to the C. So if there's, meaning this, if you look at this, this exactly, or not exactly, uh, the power here is slightly different from the uh, Hubble and Hudiki containment. Hubble and Hudiki containment is just this power without this H, right? Uh, and, 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 uh, and, uh, the statement is for all sufficiently large power R. So what we're saying is that if there's one power C so that this containment holds, then the same containments, but now we have H, uh, we have R instead. Hold for all R big enough. So um, of course, having a smaller power here means that you have a bigger ideal. So if this is contained in here, then uh, the conjecture um, uh, power would be uh, containing, uh, would be containing this uh, on, on the right-hand side as well. So the difficulty in, in this uh, problem is, in fact, uh, at, at the beginning, we had the hard time uh, just writing the, uh, proving the statement without this minus H. Just assuming that the conjecture uh, uh, containment holds for one value C, then it should hold for stable or large enough values R. We actually had a hard time proving that. And then we found out that if we include a negative H here, then things actually uh, works out. So let me give you uh, maybe an example here. Let's see what this will give us. So maybe I'll recall uh, the Fermat's configurations configurations in P2. So maybe uh, I'll draw that for you again. So this is, um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, this is an ideal 
uh, let me uh, even write. Um, so R is C X Y Z, and I is just X um, Y to the N minus Z to the end, Y Z to the N minus X to the end, and Z X to the N minus Y to the end. And so what we know about this is that this is a counterexample to the Harburn uh, containments. However, we can test that if you look at um, I to the power symbolic 10 power, right? It's contained in M to the fifth times I to the fifth. So there are different ways of testing this. Either you can just use Macaulay 2 and test it directly because you know what the ideal is, or, or you can do some argument. Uh, uh, so this is one containment, right? And this is exactly of the form that we're going to see here because 10 is just two times pi minus two. Uh, that's not true, uh, six, sorry. Two times six minus two, so this should be six. And so by this uh, uh, theorem, uh, this implies that I to the two R minus two is contained in M to the R, I to the R for all R big enough. And this established, this establishes the uh, stable Hubbard. Right. Because stable Hubbard basically say that you have I the two R minus one should be inside M to the um, R, I to the R. And of course, uh, I to the two R minus one already is already inside I to the two R minus two. So we actually prove something uh, slightly stronger than uh, stable Hubble conjecture. So what this is saying is, even though the Fermat configuration give us a counter example to Hubble containments, but it doesn't give us a counterexample to, to the stable Hubbard cont uh, containment. So sometimes the containment might fail for the first few values, but uh, when it goes for large enough powers, it still holds. Uh, another example is uh, again this, the second example that I uh, mentioned to you. It's uh, this this one right here. So this is uh, uh, nineteen. Uh, the ideal of nineteen triple point, which are intersections of 12 lines. Okay. And what we also know is that this is a counter example to this containment. However, we can verify here that I to the symbolic eight power is contained in M to the fifth, I to the fifth. Once again, you can do some argue, direct argument, or you can just verify that with Macaulay too. So by the one containment implies stable containment, we know that I to the two R minus two is contained in M to the R, I to the R for all R big enough. So once again, this is a counter example to Hubble containment for small values of R, but it's not a counter example to the stable Hubble containment, still satisfy uh, stable Hubble containment. Both, both the and both the cases are height is two. Yes, yeah. So they are point in P two, right? So uh, height is two. Um, so of course um, we. So let me also recall that the generalized, the general form of the Habern. Let me just put abbreviation here. Habern Hunicki uh, conjecture. Uh, basically say that we should have i to the r t minus h plus one contains in m to the r h minus one i to the t and to the power r. So we were actually hoping to get some sort of similar statement like this. We were hoping to say that, well, if we can prove this containment or maybe some slight modifications, of this containment for one specific value C here, then we would have this containment for all big enough 
value r. Uh, unfortunately, that proves to be very difficult. So we, what we could prove was slightly weaker. We need a stronger statement to imply the stable statements. Okay, so let me put down another theorem here. So this is 1.2. So this uh, this is also again by Bisu, Kufo, myself and Win in uh, uh, 2022. So what we uh, proved uh, was that uh, again assume all the same or the same ideal i if there exists a value c such that the containment we need is the following uh, i to the power c times t plus h minus one so that looks very similar to this however we need to drop the power by h minus one so minus h plus one if that is contained in what we need right m to the c h minus one i to the t c so it's not the same as that it's sl sl uh, slightly stronger because the power is smaller uh, then the, the 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 desired the desired containment so r to the t plus h minus one is contained in r m to the r minus uh, h minus one i to the t uh, to the power r and we did we couldn't even prove this for all our beginner we can only prove it for infinitely many holes for infinitely many values of r but that's enough to establish the the Mayes conjecture right so um so so uh it's so it boils down to, so maybe I will state it here. So because, thanks to uh, this one containment implies uh, stable containment, what we were able to establish was uh, Chunovsky or containments and inequalities that we wanted uh, for general set of point. And so, uh, so theorem, maybe I put the theorem here. So 4.2.1, uh, this is again by the same group of people. Um, what we prove uh, is that the stable Hubbard conjecture holds for uh, a set of general point, any set of general point. And so let me uh, give you uh, a very brief sketch of the proof. So first, the stable Hubbard conjecture or the, st uh, or the, or the Hubbard uh, containments ask the following. So we, again, as I said, we move to the generic set of point, right? So we established The containment, we just established the containment. And this is now we're looking at not just I, but IZ, which is the ideal of the generic set of point to N C minus N plus one contained in M and I Z to the power C for, for some value C where IZ is the defining ideal of the generic set of point. In this space when we enlarge the ring, uh, the field. So that's the first step. And in fact, we proved that actually this statement is true for all big enough values C. 
but all we need is just one value C. And then you use specializations. Remember that we just need one value C to get an open subset U in the parameter space such that for all A inside U, we have the containment that I of A, uh, maybe I should have written more carefully. So this is I of uh, act Z, not I of Z. So I of act Z, the I, defining ideal of act Z. Uh, so here should be the defining ideal of act A to the power n c minus n plus one, written in m um, uh, to the power i x a to the power c. And so basically that's, uh, that this is saying that this containment is true for one general set, for a general set of point. And then we use one containment implies stable result. for applying to this containment to get the stable containment to show that, to show that. For all A inside just one open subset, uh, I of X A, which is the specialized set of point and R minus N plus one contained in M I X A. Uh, for all are big enough. So, um, so this particularly uh, implies that um, uh, that uh, this guy has what we call expected resurgence. So, I'm I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about this. But anyway, uh, from here we already know that it's uh, uh, it uh, the, the the theorem holds, right? So, uh, so that's the that's the idea of proving uh, a stable containments or uh, and and for, for stable containment uh, you you have uh, the um, the and 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 uh, Chinovsky. For example, the next one would be. Um, uh, theorem, maybe I'll uh, maybe I put out a theorem here just to So uh, maybe I'll put down a uh, Yeah, so maybe suppose so this is the stable Hubble and Huliki that and is bigger than or equal to three and S is bigger than or equal to four to the end, uh, then the stable Habern Huniki conjecture hold for a general set, uh, for a set of. S general point in pitch P end. And so let me uh, again uh, sketch the proof. And the idea is very much the same. So first we move to the generic set of point. We establish whatever we want for the generic set of points. And then we specialize once. So uh, here we're going to uh, establish Let's say uh, this uh, containment I of X Z to the power uh, N C minus N. So remember that uh, the stable Hubble and Huniki conjecture say that this should be N C, right? But the one containment imply all containments or stable containment that we have has to have this negative N. So that's why there's this statement here uh, containing M of I of X Z to the power C for some 
value c. So once again, in this case, we actually prove that it's true for all c big in f, and then use specializations. Once to get i of x to n c minus n contained in m i. Wait, sorry, this is b c. The statement should be c uh, n minus one. So this should be the same, c uh, n minus one i of x for a general center point. And then we use, again, one implied stable results to get the same containment i of x to n r minus n containing m r n minus one. Uh, there should be a c here, sorry. i of x to the power r for all uh, big and f. And remember that this contains i of n r. So that established uh, stable Hubble and Hunicke containment. So in both of these results, uh, excuse me. Yes, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, uh, regarding to the previous proof, uh, when you was using the specialization, uh, you was uh, uh, using that result that there exists some point A in the open set U. And when you are using in the second time specialization, so is there any importance uh, of uh, uh, mentioning a particular point when we are proving these kind of inequality uh, <coughs> by using the specialization? Oh, you mean the difference between my, my expression here yeah. And and my and my expression here, right? You're yeah. saying that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th there's no. I'm 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 just lazy. So here I write in a shorthand. So, so so the right. I mean, as I said before, right? Uh, when you have X Z being the generic set of point, every time you specialize, meaning you replace Z by some A. Some A. And then, okay. Yeah. And then and then so so you get X A. And of course you also know that every set of point in P N comes in this way. For every set of point in P N there's some A such that you specialize X, Z to A, you get the same, you get a given set of point. Okay. And, okay. And, and so if you can prove that there's an open dense subset in the parameter space so that some statement is true for, for this A in, inside that open dense subset, that means you are proving the statement for a general set of point. And when we are uh, just uh, uh, curious again, uh, for, uh, forget me for, uh, forgive me for this uh, naive question. When we are Sorry. writing this uh, inequality uh, follows from the specialization, that means uh, we are considering about the original ideal or you are, we are considering the ideal associated to the affine variety case? No, we are considering the ideal. So, so when I write I of X A, right? You mean this, this yeah, statement? Yeah. Uh, this is the defining ideal of the set of point X A inside the projective space. Inside the so, projective so space. yeah, so my specialization is like this, right? So specialization, maybe I'll write here. Specializations is I have P N over the extent, uh, extent, the field extension. And then I have this set of point X Z, that's just one fixed set of point in my uh, uh, projective space. And I specialize now to P and over C by just replacing, uh, replacing Z with A. I get this is a set of point in here, okay. right? Okay. And so this is, this is, uh, 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 this is a sub variety of P and, and I of X A is just the defining ideal of this sub variety inside this projective space. Oh. Thank you, thank you. Yes, sorry I didn't make myself clear. Uh, okay, so so uh, if you look at this, both of this proof, uh, these two steps are kind of seem, I mean, straightforward because follow from specializations and then this guy followed from the one containments imply stable containments. So what are the difficulties? Why in this uh, theorem, for example, we need this condition that S has to be at least four to the power n? It lies in the first steps. 
in any case, you, even if you reduce to the generic setup point, that, that's just one generic setup point, we still have to establish a very specific containment. And we have to find out which value C this containment would hold. And in general, that's not very easy. Uh, it's, uh, our method at least is very combinatorial. Actually, this is a, a very new kind of a, a, a combinatorial formula kind of thing. And, and to prove that we need this condition because it's more or less a counting uh, kind of arguments. Um, on the other hand, uh, here, for example, uh, in order to, uh, again, to get a, the same result, the, the last two steps are uh, straightforward specializations, one containment implies stable containment. Uh, so the theorem boils down to establishing one containment um, uh, for the generic set of point. But this containment is actually, uh, one can prove directly for any set of point, any set of, uh, for, for any number of point, uh, or actually it's followed from, um, uh, previous well, uh, previous result by uh, Tohan and uh, Tohan Neonu and C. Uh, on the other hand, so you see the difference between this guy and this guy here is this uh, extra power of uh, of M, and of course the power is slightly different. But the extra power of M is the difficulties that creates problem for us, and that's why when we want to get this extra power of of, of M, we have to have uh, enough of points so that you can extract the power of M, uh, the, the power of the maximum ideal out. So that's, that's the difficulties. Okay, um, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll move on and, and give you um, maybe one more theorem here. So this is, so, so, so far I've only talked about uh, Chudnovsky's conjecture, right? So this statement here, basically give me Chudnovsky. And so for Dimai, what we have to prove, uh, as I said, uh, is slightly different because for Dimai, we do not have the results that one containment implies stable containment. So what we need to prove is, again, so maybe I'll say the, the result first. So let n be at least three. T is a positive, uh, integers and then the my um, conjecture holds for a set of s at least two t plus two to the power n general point. In P end. And so let me just say the proof once again, we have to, the first step is to focus to the generic set of points, try to establish whatever containment or inequality that you would like to have for the generic set of point. So for us, because of the, the, the Emmaus conjecture, you need a slightly stronger containment. So we have to establish the containments, maybe I'll write out right here, I of X Z to the power C T plus N minus one minus N plus one contained in M C N minus one I to the power T to the power C for some value C, for some value C. Uh, and then we use special, uh, specializations. So once again, I should have written that using specialization, there's an uh, open dense subset in the parameter space so that if you look at uh, specialized points with your parameter inside that open dense subset, then you have the containment. But for short, I'm just writing down the containment and say that is true for a general set of point. Uh, is specialization to get the containment that I of X, C, T plus N minus one, minus N plus one, inside M, C, N minus one, I of X to the power T, 
uh, to power C. Uh, for a general set of point x inside p n, right? And then now we have to use the second theorem, right? So now we use uh, not the one containment imply stable containment, but uh, but this one here you have a stronger containment that implies a weaker containment for infinitely many values of right? so uh, use known results so known results to get i of x to the power r t plus n minus one containing m to the r n minus one i x to the power t to the power of r for infinitely many values r. And this basically gives us the Mayus conjecture, right? The Mayus. Because again, for these two conjecture, all we need is the containment for infinitely, infinitely many values of the power. So, uh, so uh, a couple of lectures again, uh, I think somebody asked me, what happened if you move beyond point, right? Are there any similar results for uh, uh, ideals of any uh, sub variety or, sub, uh, or any projective variety of any dimension of any big kinds, right? So uh, let me spend my uh, remaining time to talk about containments, uh, uh, beyond uh, maybe containment and inequalities. Excuse me, uh, Professor Hal. Yes. Yeah, uh, I, I'm just curious about this C. Uh, when you were trying to establish that inequality, usually the C is uh, very, very large most of the time. Yeah, so in most of the time that when we establish, so remember that uh, here we only need this containment is true for one value C. But in yeah. most of the time, we actually prove this uh, uh, this containment for. Uh, let's see. In, in in the other case, we in the other cases we prove the containment for O C big enough. And this case, I uh, I think in this case we we actually exhibit what this value C should be. Yeah. So so uh, again, and exactly because of the steps where you have to find one value C that. Uh, so, uh, makes this containment hold, uh, you need these conditions, right? So again, there's some uh, counting uh, uh, argument and, 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 and making use of what is already known about the Nagata's conjecture. So that's, that's the idea behind uh, the first step here. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, so let's talk about uh, containment and inequality beyond points. So as I said before, when you look at uh, uh, ideals of any uh, projective variety, your big high is no longer n. So we don't expect uh, the same kind of uh, uh, containments or inequality where you still have n here. Right? So you have to replace by uh, something else. And, and, and because there's, there's been containment results using big height, so it makes sense to think about this uh, uh, same kind of containment replacing this n by big, big height. Right? So the, the first question is, I'm going to state here. Is that uh, let I be a radical homogeneous ideal in R of big height H uh, does the containment uh, I to the R T plus H minus one contingent M to the R H minus one I to the T or R holds 
or R large enough. So you see that it's very much the same as this container, except now instead of having N, we just have the big high H. So this, this is a generalization of uh, uh, Harbon uh, or, or, or the stable Harbon Huniki uh, containments. And uh, here, instead of uh, looking at radical homogeneous ideal in a polynomial ring, you can also state the same question for any radical ideals in any regular local ring. Right? So if you are more comfortable with local rings, you can also state the question in, in that context. Um, and then questions, or you can also ask or for all R and T, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, right? Or you can also ask what happened to equality that looks like uh, the Mai's or Chudnovsky's equalities. So let I be as before. Uh, does Sorry, excuse me. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So here, uh, okay, R and T can be any natural number, or for all, all possible. Yeah. So 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 I I just put this question here. We don't know what should be the correct statement, right? You can ask this question. Uh, is <coughs> excuse me. Is this contentment true for all R and T? Right. You can ask the same question. Uh, there might be. Uh, it might be true. It might not be true. There might be counter example. If they're counter example, then you can rephrase the question and ask, well, is it true for all T, but for R big enough, right? To avoid, you know, like a particular counter example with for, for, for small values of the powers, right? So it, for, for now, I'm, I'm going to ask this question because I don't have any counter example, right? But generally I do expect counter example. So I, I think the, 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 the more, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the higher possibility is that this statement will be true for R large, large enough. Uh, okay, so this question that the inequality, so remember that our initial inequalities is alpha of I to the power M uh, divided by M bigger than or equal to alpha of I to the power T plus h minus one. This is the Mayes conjecture. Instead of having n, you now have h. So t plus h minus one. Uh, does this whole for all, uh, maybe r, m, and t inside. Right, so. So those are the two, uh, uh, questions for uh, any class of uh, radical ideals that, uh, that you feel comfortable working with. Uh, so for example, in, in general, when one talk about ideals, especially coming from uh, geometric context, uh, the first example that people usually test is determinant of ideals. And in fact, we do prove that determinant of ideals satisfy this. So let me put an example here. Uh, so for a fixed, uh, maybe for fixed uh, integer uh, positive integer t less than equal to the mean of uh, p and q, uh, let X B uh, A P by Q matrix of indeterminates. And let I equal to I T of X be the uh, ideals, ideal of T minus. Uh, fact. So you take all T by T sub matrix, uh, sub matrices in X and you take determinants that will generally uh, generate an ideal. And that's called a T minus of X. 
Uh, then it's not very hard to see. I is a prime ideals and has height. In this case, height and big height are the same, given by P minus T plus one. So this is a famous result. If you work with determinantal ideals, uh, you will know this. And so uh, what we can do is we can uh, uh, verify that for all R, T, and C, maybe I shouldn't use T. I already have T here, so maybe L and C bigger than or equal to one, we have um, I to the R, L plus H minus one contained in M, R, H minus one. Uh, I to the power L to the power R. So this is exactly what we're looking for, right? And it's true for uh, determinantal ideals of a generic matrix. Um, you can also, uh, instead of looking at uh, a generic matrix, you can also talk about uh, ideals of uh, symmetric uh, uh, matrix of indeterminates, right? So maybe again, let or maybe for T less than or equal to P, let Y be a P by P. So it's a square matrix and a symmetric matrix of indeterminates. Uh, and let I be the ideal of T minus of Y. Uh, then in this case, one also know that I is prime. Again, this is a famous result of height uh, H equal to P minus T plus two. P minus T plus one divided by two. And once again, uh, for all R, L, and C, um, I, I, there's, there's no C, I think, sorry, in my statement, there's no C. I have, a, I have a more general statement that has C, but here, but here I don't have C. So let's just forget about C. Uh, inside end, we have the um, expected containment. Right. Um, and then so I think that's it. So one can also talk about, uh, one can also prove the same results for uh, uh, ideals of Fafavian, uh, Fafavian um, uh, of a skew symmetric matrix instead of symmetric matrix uh, of indeterminates. Uh, and uh, you get the same kind of containments. One can also talk about the ideals of star configurations and you will get the same containments. Uh, I think it's a good time for me to, uh, oh, I think I still have time, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, uh, just one question. So the yeah. same thing is true for the toric ideal? Uh, not that I know of. So I, 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 I suspect that is true, but let me, let me maybe write here. So what I also know is that the same thing is true for the following. Same uh, conclusions. Oh, for so um, uh, let's see, you have uh, um, ideals of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, Fafian, Fafian of a skew symmetric 
matrix of indeterminates. So let me explain this a little bit. So here for symmetric matrix of, of indeterminates, you really want uh, that yij is the same as yji, right? So that's what it means by symmetric. For uh, skew symmetric, you want zij to be negative of zji. And particularly uh, the diagonal entries on the diagonal will be zero. Uh, and you want the size to be even. And then you take uh, any even uh, uh, um, uh, minus of the matrix, that even minus, and then you take the square root of that even minus, right? This, the square root will generate, uh, generate this uh, ideal, which we call the Papavian ideal uh, of, of, of this matrix. Uh, it's also uh, true for ideals of star configurations. In PN, now let me also say that star, uh, for star configuration, the, in, in the, the classical notion of star configuration uh, is just you take a, a bunch of hyperplanes that intersect each other uh, nicely, and then you look at the intersection point of this uh, uh, these hyperplanes. However, one can instead of looking at hyperplanes, uh, look uh, also look at uh, hypersurfaces. So you you take a bunch of hypersurfaces again; they intersect each other nicely in the sense that if you take uh, a sequence of them, short enough sequence of them, uh, they always form a regular sequence, right? So uh, and then you take the the points of intersection of these hypersurfaces. That's from uh, what we call the stack, uh, still the stack configuration of hypersurfaces. Uh, and uh, the same conclusion, the same kind of inequality uh, is going to hold for, uh, for a stack configurations. Uh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, yeah. Can you return to your question number 4.3.2? 4. Number 4.3.2, yes. Oh. Uh, was here. it here uh, m to be approaches to infinity uh, on the left so, hand so, side? So, 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 uh, whether or not you put this, or you can, you can also put um, instead of putting this, you can also put alpha hat, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's the same. The conjecture. So, so the conjecture that. Uh, this is true for all M is the same as saying that alpha hat is at least this. It's equivalent. Be because, uh, so, because we so, know that alpha hat is the limits of the left-hand side, right? Mm -hmm. But we also know that alpha hat is the infinitum of the left-hand side. Ah, okay, okay, now I agree. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so if alpha hat is bigger than this, then everything else is already bigger than this. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I, I think uh, that's it for me. Uh, I'm going to finish my lecture here. Once again, allow me to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me to uh, present my work here. It's, uh, it's my pleasure and my honor. And uh, thank you again uh, for attending my lectures. And, and now I'm open for uh, questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ha. Uh, is there any question from the audience? Uh, maybe in the chat box, is there something? Thank you everyone for... Oh. Okay. Is there someone uh, with question or probably with remarks? Yeah, uh, Hassan. Okay. If this is the case, uh, now uh, let's thank uh, Professor Ha. This is uh, this is a wonderful uh, uh, series of lecture you have delivered on containment problem. Uh, in fact, uh, definitely uh, we have seen the containment, but uh, mostly in the monomial cases, and particularly your paper uh, which appear with Boki, Uwe Najal, and then many, uh, particularly the case of uh, scare-free monomial case where right. you gave a formulation for computing the Waldschmidt constant. I was just curious to ask one question regarding to that particular paper. Right. Uh, is there any interest of finding uh, certain classes of uh, ideals coming from a particular graph 
which is giving uh, definitely your result is giving a bound for the Waldschmidt constant, but uh, still there is some interest in uh, refining that particular bound for particular classes of ideals by using the same result. Um, yes, the, the answer is yes. Uh, the, the, the question about the Waldschmidt constant is, a, is always a difficult question, even for monomial ideals. Uh, it's not very easy to compute the, the Waldschmidt constants. Um, so, so because we prove uh, the full containments, I think we prove even more general version uh, of that containment for square free monomial ideals. So we know that uh, this kind of inequalities uh, would hold for the, for the, for the, for the, for the uh, square free monomial ideals. Uh, but, uh, you know, how, uh, of course, because this is an equality, so one can always say, well, can we improve the right hand side? Uh, so that's that's a that's a very good question, which I don't know the answer of. Um, uh, and and uh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So the bound you 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 have given by using the linear programming is is was it the sharp bound? I was just uh, um, so so using so, using the same result to obtain uh, uh, bounds for different classes of ideal by using the graph. By yeah, using so, the same so, result. Yeah, so that's a, that's so that's another part of uh, of the containment ideals that at initially I was hoping to be able to talk about. So the same kind of containment, right? Remember here I present to you how to use containment of ideals to investigate the interpolation problems, uh, particularly the Chunovsky and the Meyers conjecture. Uh, there's another way of looking at containments of ideals. Uh, and its application in uh, integer linear programming. So in fact, uh, I wrote a paper with Chung where we discuss um, how containment of uh, powers of ideal correspond to uh, gap estimate between optimal solutions and integral optimal solution to a, uh, um, uh, to a linear programming problems. And, and so now we, there, there are a number of containment that have been, that have been established uh, for square free monomial ideals that directly translate into this gap estimates for linear programming problems. So those are, those will give us new, new bounds. And then there's also uh, known results in linear programming where they actually talk about gaps between, between uh, optimal solutions. We can also translate that back to uh, new containment <coughs> of power of ideals. So, um, so, so, so far, in, at least in my paper with Chung, we only talk about direct translation of known results in algebra, what does it give us in terms of linear programming, and known results in linear pro programming, what does it give us in algebra. Uh, there, are, there are a lot to explore. We haven't talked about whether or not we can improve the known results. For example, can we improve the containments by looking for better bound from the linear programming problems or can we improve the known bounds for or the gap estimates in the linear programming problem by uh, obtaining better containment results so that is something that we haven't looked at and i think it's worth very very much to explore yes thank you thank you very much uh, 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 thank you these uh, four lectures were full of information and definitely uh, there are a few students who already have a little bit background on algebraic geometry and definitely uh, the techniques uh, which is being used here, uh, that gives them a foot ahead problems working, who are looking for problems for the projects working in the algebraic geometry. I think containment problem uh, always hold the central, one of the central problem in the area of commutative algebra and algebraic geometry. Thank you very much, Taiha, for introducing yeah. this particular problem uh, in front of uh, this curious audience. Uh, let's give an applaud for to Professor. Thank you for having me. And now I request you to please uh, uh, stop oh, this screen stop share sharing so my, that yes. we can view you. Yes. And I request all the participants to please gather here so that we can have a group photo uh, with Professor Taiha and uh, have some ceremonial closing of his lectures. <laughs> I'll just wait for a while. Uh, please, uh, I have a question from Professor Taiha. Uh, uh, okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead, please. Actually, this is a question uh, from his yesterday lecture. Um, uh, in in the yesterday, uh, Professor Hogg 
uh, defined a theorem that is theorem 3.17 uh, given by Krull. And yes. it's uh, given two of the main uh, results on pi survey, that is pi survey uh, of i intersection j is equal to the pi survey of i intersection pi sub intersection j. This is basically i and j are the two ideals. Right. Yes. So 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 i and j in this in this case would be ideals, but inside the uh, the polynomial ring with variable uh, x zero to x n, but coefficients are rational functions in the in the new indeterminate z i j. Actually, I have a question. Uh, whether we we could connect this result uh, and we uh, whether we can create the independence of two ideals. Uh, independence of two ideal means uh, when we apply pi of i intersection j, could we generate the result pi of i intersection uh, pi of i into pi of j? That is basically the result of independence of two ideals. Uh, you, you mean uh, you mean the question is whether or not this open then subset uh, for this equality to happen uh, uh, is dependent of the ideal of the choices of the ideals? That's, is that the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry, I, I couldn't hear the question. Hello? Yeah, Professor Hao? Hello? Yeah. Actually, uh, my question is, could we uh, define the independency of two ideals? And the main idea behind the independency of two ideals, uh, that is pi of i intersection j, which is equal to the pi of i into pi of j. Yeah. Uh, so maybe, maybe I maybe it's better if I share a screen so that I know if uh, if we are talking about the same thing, is it okay? So are are you talking about are you talking about this uh, this containment uh, this uh, result here? This is this, yes. This is the result basically. Basically, yes, my so, result is pi of i intersection j, which is equal to the pi of i intersection pi of j. Could we replace yes, so, the result pi of yes, i so, intersection j, which is equal to the pi of i into pi of j, so that we can create the independency, uh, independent, uh, the two ideals become the independent, independent idea. Oh, um, yeah. E so yeah, so I haven't I haven't thought about it. I mean, I, what I what I do know is one containment is always true for um, for any ideal. So so I think if I remember correctly, I think this containment is always true, and then and then for this containment, you need a to be inside some open subset, and this open subset depends on the choice. Uh, of course, depends on i and j. Now I I don't know. What happens if i and j are independent? For example, if you're talking about ideals in this in, in involving different variables, I don't know in that case if you can take this to be the whole space. That I that I'm not that I don't know. But well, it could possibly be, yeah. Is is that your question? Yeah, yeah. I got I got it. Thank you. 